Hello, I'm Toy Cat, and welcome back to another second channel video. So over the festive period, the European Union and the United Kingdom agreed on a Brexit trade deal. This is interesting because although the UK left the EU, here's the list of EU countries right now, um, although the UK left the EU at the start of 2020, uh, they left on agreements that were effectively a transition period. Uh, it's effectively EU membership and everything but name and representation right now. But as of the 1st of uh, January of 2021, the brand new Brexit trade deal will be taking effect. The new uh, relations uh, will be uh, going forwards and it's super interesting to look at because the UK seems to think it's great They got what they wanted they got access to the market uh, without any tariffs and they can sell stuff to Europe and vice versa um, And uh, the European Union got what they wanted as a least bad version possible under the circumstances Because they can look to their other EU members and say look the UK left But there's loads of things that they don't have the EU members do have look at the remo Removal of border checks ignoring that a lot of non EU members don't have border checks checks for the EU because of Schengen and also ignoring the fact that when the UK was in the EU they had border checks as well and also ignoring that there are other EU members that will still have border whatever ignoring that though you can see how like oh yeah pet passports they're valid across the EU not valid across the e UK the right to work live and study in another EU country that's going to be on a country by country level it's no longer going to be a blanket thing they have across all EU states um, there's a lot of actually pretty important ones in here like for instance uh, the single energy market the UK will no longer be a part of Erasmus student exchange programs long no longer going to be a part of it single internal transport market for whole years, no longer a part of it, no longer part of the single aviation area, which is maybe a big deal. But the biggest one is the financial services passport that is missing. This is going to be the big asterisk that could maybe make this deal a very bad thing for the UK. We Again, we don't know for sure how banks react to this because that's Real, realistically what it comes down to, right? Like, can they still do enough of their operation in London? Or does or does the UK lose one of its major industries? Who knows for sure? Um, all we know for right now is that the UK has left and they're, they're, for, for, uh, they're no longer going to have the right to work, leave and study in another EU country. And visa-free travel is going to be limited to 90 days in a 180 day period, whereas before it was previously much more. And now people say because of this, now that the UK has left the EU on a deal that is not like EU light or whatever. Therefore, uh, the thing that can happen finally is Kanzuk. Yeah, people have been telling me to talk about Kanzuk for a while. And now that the UK has left the EU, it's like, this can finally happen, right? I mean, Sydney is a great city. Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and the UK, they're so close. I mean, Toronto and Sydney, so similar. And London, these three great cities plus you know, New Zealand's ones, uh, <laughs> Wellington or Auckland, who knows for sure. Um, but like, uh, you know, like these these great cities can finally get together. These great countries can finally have an agreement of closer ties, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And my honest, the reason I've made a video about Kansas so far, in case you're curious as to why those four countries, because it seems arbitrary, uh, the the Anglosphere is generally considered to be uh, the U.S. The uh, like, the, there's like lots of layers of it. There's like places where English is an official language, but like kind of not really. There's like English is an official language, but one of several. So they have English as a major language, but not all of it. And then there's the Anglosphere where like English is the primary and the, you know, like it's not the official, not official, but like it's the most used and the primary and etc, etc language. So uh, there are six countries in that. There's the USA, UK, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Ireland, and the English speaking Caribbean. Um, of those countries, the largest are the six we just mentioned, the USA, UK, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Ireland. Um, Ireland's obviously in the EU and the USA is the USA. They're not going to get on board of a deal, but the other countries have a lot in common and therefore Kansuk, right? And my honest first reaction is like, sounds cool. My honest second reaction is like, oh, it's kind of manufactured. Like, they're trying to make it sound like a real thing that's definitely happening in all these places. And it does sound like a thing that would be beneficial. And there are two big reasons as to why. There are two big arguments as to why Kanzuk should definitely exist. And let's let's talk about them by uh, mentioning the fact that, like, one of the things the UK actually did not like from their deal with the EU was this you know, like it's, it's listed as a negative here, but the right to work, live and study in another EU country is one of the four pillars of the EU. The, the EU is made up on the single market of goods, the single market of services, the single market of labor is one of the key ones because people can move from any country to any other EU country where their services are perhaps best used. Actually, you know what, can, can we stop here? I, I wanna do a whole video about fun facts now the UK has left the EU. And my favorite one, my favorite little tiny one right here, that's just on a bare technicality, is now Ireland is the furthest isolated member of the EU from another EU state. Previously, Cyprus, if you look right here, uh, the distance from Cyprus to the nearest country that was also in the EU was about 400 kilometers. That was the furthest between any EU state and any other EU state um, in terms of like the main territories. But now if you look, the closest bit of Ireland 
to the closest bit of France is just over. I've, I've tried, <laughs> I, I, I have confirmed this is correct. Even if you uh, cross over the UK, it's still just slightly over, meaning Ireland is now at the periphery of the EU. Wow, there's there's some fun facts for you. Did you know the UK and Ireland joined the EU together? Here's the here's the Kansas flag, by the way. Do you like it? It's part UK, part Canada, part New Zealand, part Australia. Beautiful. It's actually pretty ugly. But anyway, so Kanzuk, it's, it, it can happen now, but we're going to stop talking about the EU and start talking about Kanzuk. And there's uh, a few big reasons Kanzuk makes sense, because one of the things that EU always disliked about their membership was that it was kind of an asymmetrical benefit. The ability for anyone from the UK to live in Europe and vice versa was seen as a benefit that was mostly used one way, because according to the UN, there's about 1.2 million British people living in another EU country, um, and uh, about 800,000 of those are works in the dependence, but that is uh, much less than the 3.5 3 million EU-born uh, citizens who live in the UK. Um, if you actually look at it on a country-by-country -country level, you can see how, like, okay, Austrians in the UK, 26,000. UK and Austria, 11,000. Belgians in the UK, 32,000. Be UK citizens in Belgium, 27,000. Uh, Bulgarians in the UK, 77,000. UK and Bulgaria, 5,000. Croatia is, like, 6,500. Czech Republic is 42,000 to 5,000. In fact, the only countries where the UK has more uh, in the EU than vice versa is Cyprus, uh, as you can see right here, and Spain, which like, <laughs> if you're from the UK, you know that one is very self-evident. But it's fascinating when you look at countries like Romania, where the benefit is so one-sided. 229,000 Romanians have moved to the UK versus 3,000 vice versa. And um, it's interesting because, you know, it, obviously like the actuality of this, you could easily argue is like, oh, uh, you, you know, are, is a migrant to a country more benefit than downside, or are, are the costs of providing the infrastructure, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, going to outweigh those benefits? There's there's probably some truth in the middle of there. Like most migrants probably contribute more than not, and some don't. But the, the the you know the benefit of it, the ability to move freely for both people, is kind of asymmetrical because not only is it used by three times as many people. Um, vice versa, but it's also much more readily used that way because most EU countries teach English as a second language pretty well, whereas the UK doesn't. And although that's arguably a failing of our government, it doesn't stop it being seen that way. And especially, you can see that that's true because you know, like if you look at the Anglosphere countries, and then you look at where the UK, uh, you know, citizens choose to move by looking at this lovely Wikipedia article, British Diaspora. You can check any uh, page for the dias di diaspora of a country, so you can see like where are all the Germans living, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And one of the most fascinating ones to me is British, because if you look around the world, you can see how, uh, first of all, 82% of the UK is uh, actually uh, British ancestry, slightly less than the Pitcairn Islands, which is a whole story of terrible atrocities and weird stuff happening. It's a, it's an island of 49 people living in the middle of nowhere, and you know, every time I remember it exists, it blows my mind. But you can see how like New Zealand has a almost n not too far off British percentage from the UK. So does Australia and Canada, and the US only has 11%, but that's excluding people who are British, but like don't consider that to be their main thing. They're Americans now, or whatever else. Um, so that's interesting by itself. But if you look at the countries where the UK citizens move the most, you can see how even though it was instantaneous to move to Spain, you get on a flight, now you're living in Spain. Even though it's instantaneous to go to, uh, Ireland has a common travel area that will probably uh, still override this, but like, even though it was instantaneous to go to France, 200,000 people went to the country they had the ability to, and it, it's a two hour train journey from my house. <laughs> like, wait, oh wait, let, let, me, let me prove this right now. <clears throat> if you want to go from London to Paris, uh, right now, I think they actually stop trains, but like, you want to go from London to Paris, and you want to live in a new city of a similar size, it's a 57 hour walk, the fact that you can do it, or it's a two hour, 17 minute train. I can be in France, but like, the, by the time you see this video, I could have spent most of my day there, but yet that's not the case, right? That's, I, I, I'm, I did not choose to do that. People instead go, you know, let, let me just show you this one on a map. Here is the distance from the UK to, to France. This is a, <laughs> it, it's literally, you cross a channel, it's 27, it's 80 kilometers. That's actually a terrible distance. Uh, I, I think it's like 26, that's the number in my head. It's 34 kilometers, 26 miles is maybe the number in my head. Um, so like 26 miles between the UK and uh, France. How far is it between the UK and Australia? Okay, so that is uh, 8,443 miles or 13,500 kilometers. Where did more people move to? <laughs> like this is, this shocks me that this is true. Australia by a factor of six and a half. Six and a half many and more, more British residents, people with British passports, moved to Australia in their lifetime than have moved 
to France. Even Spain, which is the single high, you know, like if you take the EU as a whole, um, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, the EU as a whole has about 1.2 million uh, British people living there. Australia, which there are strict immigration rules. I uh, one my my one of my ex-girlfriends had to like have a sham marriage so she could live in Australia. Um, which you know, fun fact. I uh, <laughs> the fact that you have to do I have to get a sham marriage to live in Spain right now? No, for another few more days, uh, four more is it? I can just go and live in Spain. Could hop on the plane tomorrow. But yet still, more people live in Australia alone. That shows how the barriers are not about you know like the. The barrier of like getting the visa, maybe that's too high, maybe that's the bigger point. But the language barrier is so much higher because I've been to Spain. It's like genuinely challenging. I know 50 words of Spanish and it's not enough to get by there versus the equivalent vice versa. Also, by the way, just as a fun little fact right here, uh, even though there are more UK citizens living in Australia than the EU combined, if you take the US and Canada, that's also true. If you take New Zealand, which is just, again, even further away, like it's like, oh yeah, what if Australia isn't remote enough for you? What if you want to go to New Zealand, which is half the planet of world? Uh, literally, the New Zealand New Zealand is antipodal to the UK in certain points. And it's like, oh yeah, so this, this country that's on the other side of the planet, it's expensive. There's not a particular particularly great job market there for you when you do get there. And also the, the immigration restrictions are pretty high too. And it's like, so like, there's not many there. It's like, oh, more people went to New Zealand than France. How is that true? Language barrier, it's a big thing. So given that there are a list, there are a set of countries that not only share a heritage, you can see 68% or 59% of people in New Zealand are of British ancestry, 46 or you know, 31. Like these countries have so much in common and therefore it makes sense to get some form of trade agreement going or bare minimum fancy website and maybe some free movement. Because if you look at uh, polls for free movement, you can see how, uh, wait, if you look at polls for free movement, you can see how most countries are like, yeah, we have a lot in common with each other and uh, Australians have the same problem moving vice versa. Like, yeah, besides like a working holiday visa, it can be hard to go to the UK. Why don't we make it so it's free movement now that the countries are all kind of independent of each other. And, uh, the, you know, this is something a lot of people would say, including, by the way, because uh, for the most part, this is just a website that made up its whole own thing. Like, you know, what? Uh, here's the About Us page. Oh, that no, way. Ooh. <laughs> Kanzuk is just, uh, uh, International was founded in January 2015. It's uh, advocating... Uh, facil and facilitating migration, free trade, and foreign policy coordination. Those things do make a lot of sense. Right now, if you look at the foreign policy of uh, you know Canada, it's much closer to the US than the UK, for, for obvious uh, geographic reasons. If you look at Australia and New Zealand, they have their own little bubble, but that bubble doesn't extend over here. Why don't we make the Trans-Tasman Agreement, which is called that way because this is the Tasman Sea. Why don't we make agreements like that cover more countries? I, um, I, uh, you know, Jigabov, he's a friend of mine from the Minecraft marketplace, Australian living in Canada. When I went to, uh, when I went to Banff, for some reason, I, I don't know why, I guess because there aren't many ski resorts in um, <laughs> Australia because not enough. Yeah, I, I don't understand why or what, but I do know that there's so many Australians in Banff in uh, Canada for all the ski seasons because they can, because language barrier makes it easy. Why not? And given that the countries are of similar wealth and similar uh, status so that you don't get lopsided relationships, why not have this happen? Why don't we make this a trans uh, continental agreement? Yeah, literally three different continents, eh? And the reason is mostly like, well, getting off the ground's gonna be hard. If you look at the endorsements, um, cause I honestly, when I first saw this, it was just a fun idea that was being advertised on social media. But if you look, a lot of people have gone behind it, such as a single Senator in Tasmania. Yeah. Tasmania, the best state in Australia. Yeah. I'm calling you out Tasmania. You're the worst state. Yeah. Who, who even remembers your estate? You're like, yeah, New South Wales, the South Australia, North Australia, West Australia. Oh, I don't know, Victoria sounds like one. Tasmania? No, that's the character from the cartoons. Yeah, you suck, Eric Abetz. I'm just kidding, you're probably great. You know, he's he's a liberal guy, apparently. Also, there's one senator from Victoria, so there's like one senator in Australia proper that, uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna roast Tasmania for a bit. You know, your flag has a lion on it. It should have a Tasmanian devil, I'm just saying. Like, if Australia can have, uh, you know, if, if Australia can have a kangaroo on their coat of arms, why can't you have a Tasmanian devil? on yours, Tas Tasmania. You know, get out of here, Tasmania. Just just join New Zealand already, why don't you? Anyway, so with that said, the Australian Taxpayers Alliance is on board of it, but like, you know what, we're basically saying nothing. The Conservative Party of Canada has their official policy being in favor of it to some extent, so that's pretty big. Um, in New Zealand, the, pri the Deputy Prime Minister, except actually former Deputy Prime Minister, yeah, former Deputy Prime Minister, uh, because uh, in the latest election, he, he, he was no longer needed. So like, okay, We've got the leader of the 
ACT New Zealand and their party as a whole, which is a, I looked into them, they're a brand new party, they have 10 MPs, which is pretty good admittedly, and uh, yeah, that's kind of it. So okay, sure, <laughs> that's something. No Cox, a Anglican priest, wow, New Zealand has so many. But in the UK it is officially supported by the British Unionist Party, which I looked into them, you can tell from this purple link. They're a, they're a party in the UK that thinks not only should we stay as one country, but the devolution is, like, too far. We should undo that. Like, you're not giving Scotland their own parliament? Bad idea. Let's take it away. Which I, I find hilarious. Fun fact. They don't actually do very well, and they have a French flag as their logo. How's that gonna work? I know it's just blue, white, red, but still. Anyway, that said, uh, the Libertarian parties, and also the Conservative and Unionists, who are the party in charge right now. So, uh, I think in reality, will you get a Kanzuk with an official website that looks fancy with, oh, look at this. Will this be an official agreement? It probably won't be called Kanzuk. It probably, um, there probably won't be a full free movement, a full free trade deal between the four countries because distance is so high, but because all four countries have a similar reliance, uh, besides New Zealand, but like still to some extent New Zealand, on services. I mean, Australia has a lot of goods as well. Canada has, like every country has their own little unique things, but the, the fact that all four countries do a lot of trade in spite of their distance. Wait, do I need to show you this map again? Look at the distance. Look how far apart they are, and notice how many people are moving from each country to the other, and how many, you know, like, goods are doing so. Um, in a world where barriers between further away countries are getting smaller, not higher, maybe, you know, I think having a deal would make a lot of sense. How, I, what would that deal be? Uh, we don't know for sure. Uh, how many people support that deal? A lot of people vaguely are on board of it. Um, but the truth is, even though it's, you can see, the UK is clearly the country which is most in favor, like, uh, the, the UK is the country that sees the most promise in this. And, uh, you know, to some extent, that's because it's like getting the gang back together. Like, hey, what if we got the the uh, the old Commonwealth um, realms, I think they were called? But what if we got the old uh, <laughs> parts of the UK back together, eh? Um, that's like part of it. Although actually, if you look at the public opinion, it's actually lowest here. Oh, but this polling, you might be like, wow, New Zealand's 82% in favor. Canada's 76% in favor. This is polling done by Kanzuk International. This, like, it's very hard to find this is a thing. And I think the biggest reality is this is just the UK saying, hey, we'd like we'd like the ability to move somewhere where we, we can. Because if you look at the countries that UK citizens even want to move the most to, have even considered moving to, it's like Canada, New Zealand, Netherlands at 51%, although no one does it, you know? 51% of people consider moving to the Netherlands. Do you know how, people do, how many people have? 44,000. Actually, you know what? I could end this video by talking about, like, so, Kanzuk, um, did you know, will it happen? Uh, it won't be a proper agreement, like, it won't be an EU-style agreement. It'll be a very loose trade deal, most likely, if at all. <laughs> uh, and it'll probably have a loosening of visas, but likely not a visa-free zone. Visa-free zone is a great idea. Will it happen, though? Who knows for sure. For what it's worth, Canada, um, is one of the few countries that gives the UK a six-month, uh, visa free stay there, which is uh, uncommon. In fact, wait, me and my girlfriend, so my girlfriend's American. Uh, we've worked out there are two countries that give us both six months access. Uh, one is Canada, and what's the other? Leave your guess right, uh, you know, just just say it out loud and uh, we'll use the honor system. Wow, did you guess Georgia? <laughs> I bet you didn't guess Georgia, but yeah, the, uh, the UK and the US both get six months visa free stay in Georgia. So I don't know how you could use that fact to your advantage. But yeah, anyway, so with that said, um, the, the last thing I want to do, because Kanzuk, we, we're being a dead horse. Like, it's, it's, it's just an imaginary topic that is somehow, when you, when you come up with an idea that's so interesting, people do talk about it and it maybe goes places. Now it can go places. Will it go places? I mean, if you look at the four countries now, uh, Australia and New Zealand have some of the tightest border restrictions in the world because of COVID. Canada has not too far behind restrictions. Like right now, people can literally not move between the UK and those three other countries, and for the most part, vice versa, um, with the UK being the weird exception. And uh, so let's end this video on an entirely different thought. Hey, let's go with Toy Cat goes through the British diaspora and he, and he, ran, and he, he gets surprised by them. Because, you know, Australians having 1.3 million British people, kind of shocking, right? Canada having 600,000 compared to, you know, um, Norway with 15,000. It's interesting to, to note. But uh, more interesting is the countries that have few. Like, there are less than 100 British citizens living in Greenland. Makes sense. I'm I'm surprised they can't just say zero, honestly. There's less than 100 British citizens living in a part of the UK, St. Helena. 
Uh, less than 100 British citizens living in Bhutan makes sense. But the weird one to me is like Taiwan. I love Taiwan. I would love to move there and be less than one in a hundred. You, if you met me in Taiwan, if I lived there, I would be 1% of the British people living in this country. And uh, yeah, that's something That's something that excites me. Speaking of Taiwan, they uh, there's a US pre-clearance facility uh, going there soon. So that's a thing I want to talk about. Honestly, I've got too many video topics. So uh, I know we uploaded a bunch over this past, um, I, we, look, I uploaded what, like seven, eight times in the last month? Oh, this was, oh yeah, eight, I uploaded eight times this December already. Too many times, some would say. Uh, although my hard work has paid off. You know what, these videos, they're just such hard work. Thank you for, for showing up and making it look like I'm good and making YouTube's algorithm love me. But um, yeah, also look at the, look at the way I upload videos. It's like video, week gap, three videos, one every day for a few days, week gap. And then it's like a 10 gap, an eight, eight day gap then three videos in a row, and then a gap again. I need to get better at consistency, or how about I don't get better at consistency? How about instead, you expect a video about the diaspora of the UK, and instead you get the diaspora of the Poles. Where are they living at these days? Yeah, I would have guessed the US. Wait, wait, let's get, let's let's play Guess Where the Diaspora Is. That's, that's a fun game that definitely relates to this video. Where do you think the most Danes are? That's a bad one. Okay, we can't hover over it. Where do I think the most Germans are? I'm gonna guess Austria has a crazy high percentage. And then Australia, no, I'm gonna guess America, and then Australia is gonna be low. It's gonna be like uh, Namibia or something. Uh, let's see, German diaspora. Oh, I got I got Namibia kind of, Brazil, whoa, wouldn't have guessed, would not have guessed. Let's let's go for Turkish or like, let's see where, uh, Bosnians, I know loads of Bosnians live in one city in America. It's crazy, It's uh, I think it's St. Louis maybe. Um, so there you go, fun fact. There are more Bosnians in that city than outside of it in America. I know too many fun facts that I don't want to share with you today because we can we can we can milk diaspora videos all day every day. But what I can't do all day every day is say thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed because I'll see you all in a I like I want to make a video talking about like fun facts about the EU now that it's 27 countries not 28. I wanna, I want to there's there's so many videos that I have that I want to share with you and you can look forward to seeing them in the next 1 to 8 days. Maybe more. I'm spending this January learning to learning to drive and doing some climbing. But that depends on, on UK restrictions. Because again, we, we don't know what the heck's going on with even even the next two weeks of our country. And you know, if we don't know about the next two weeks, how are we gonna know about Kanzuk? We're not. But what we do know about is the fact that I enjoyed your company today. But go enjoy some Christmassy thing. It's the 28th. It's in that awkward gap where it's not Christmas or New Year's Eve. So enjoy a thing. Go do a thing and enjoy it for me. <laughs> Thank you. Goodbye. Wait, this video was brought to you by subscribing to the channel. Subscribe now because it boosts my ego very slightly. Okay, bye.